Did you know, when you corner, your tires aren't traveling in the direction they're pointed. They travel at a slight angle off to the side called the slip angle. Is this good or bad? Does slipping make you faster or should you avoid it? Let's find out. I'm an instructor in real life and in sims. I've won races in both. I'm also a physicist who uses science to help drivers like you win. Tires are made of rubber. And when you apply a force on rubber, it deforms, which is exactly what happens when you turn the steering wheel. Here we have a photo of an experiment that was done in the 70s where they marked a motorcycle tire, rolled it over glass and took pictures of it. On the left is the tire rolling in a straight line. Notice the lighter area, which is the contact patch, the part of the tire that is in contact with the ground, or in this case, the glass. On the right is the same tire, but turned at an angle. You can see the markings are now angled from the direction of where the tire is pointed due to lateral forces. It's almost like each marking is crabbing sideways. What's also interesting is that on the leading edge, you can see that the deflection is much more gradual than the trailing edge. This is because on the leading edge, the rubber is being pushed into the ground, where on the trailing edge, the rubber is being pulled away from the ground. And the rubber in this area is slipping with the ground. As a tire has more slip angle, more of the contact patch will slip, starting from the trailing edge. Eventually, there will be more slipping than gripping, and the tire will begin to lose grip. So, does slipping the tire make you faster? The short answer is yes. All tires will have a specific slip angle where it generates the most lateral force or grip. However, this optimal angle can change with factors such as load, temperature, camber, tire material, surface conditions, and other things. As your slip angle increases, the tire generates a higher and higher lateral force until at some point, as we talked about before, the contact patch starts to slip more than it grips. Then at this point, the tire will begin to lose grip. So how do we use this to go faster? To maximize speed, you need to keep the tires at peak grip. For example, in pure cornering, you wanna keep the tires near the optimal slip angle in a given condition. A higher or lower slip angle will give you less grip. And how do we know we're near the optimal slip angle? Aside from a drop in the tire's grip, self-aligning torque will peak just before the optimal slip angle. This is because as you approach peak lateral force, the lateral force will increase less and less, whilst the pneumatic trail continues to decrease, which reduces the self-aligning torque. I know that sounds like gibberish, so I'll cover that in detail in another video, but all you need to know is that the resistance in your steering wheel will peak just before you get to the optimal slip angle. Basically, when the steering wheel starts to feel lighter, you're around peak grip. That said, it's better to have a lower slip angle than a higher slip angle. That's because when you go over grip limit, you move from slipping to sliding, and sliding loses a lot of grip. Not only does it lose a lot of grip, but you will need to reduce a lot of speed to get the tire to grip again, not to mention the heat that it has created while sliding. Another reason you don't want to go over grip limit is that when the grip limit is exceeded, the tire no longer has enough lateral force to remain in traction. When the lateral force declines, the tire will slide sideways a bit more, which increases its slip angle and further lowers the lateral force. This vicious self-reinforcing cycle of grip depletion will continue until the driver makes a corrective action. That's why when you understeer, Adding more steering doesn't make the car turn more, and actually it makes it worse. This is because when you understeer, the front tires are already at grip limit. If you add more steering, you are increasing the tire's slip angle, past where peak grip is, and it begins to slide the tire. You end up with less front grip, and the tire turns less, the front tires heat up more, and they wear more, and the added steering causes more scrubbing and slowing down the car. The more speed the car has, the more grip you need to turn it at a given radius. The correct course of action, instead of adding steering, is to slow the car down and or transfer more load onto the front tires. You want to get to a speed that the current front grip can handle or increase the front grip, usually at the expense of rear grip, 
so that it can handle the current speed. High performance tires have higher grip at lower slip angles and racing slicks are even more so. Higher grip at lower optimal angles means that the tires have very peaky grip. In other words, grip will increase and decrease very quickly as your slip angle or slip ratio increases. This steepness is known as cornering stiffness, which by the way has nothing to do with how stiff the tires are. Higher cornering stiffness provides a car with higher responsiveness, more control, less scrub, and more high-speed stability. All that good stuff that you want in a race car. But to effectively use these tires, the driver needs to keep the tires in a very small slip angle range. And this can be quite challenging to do. It is the cornering equivalent of a car with a massive turbo and peaky horsepower. This is why higher grip fast tires are generally not recommended for novice drivers. If the novice driver cannot keep the tire in the tiny slip angle range, the tire's grip could suddenly drop off leading to a loss of control. The distinction is, when your tires slip, they're actually still maintaining grip to the ground. But the rubber flexes when it is coming into and out of contact with the ground, so the tire appears to be slipping. Imagine this, you have a wheel with legs on it. Now also imagine the legs are made of an elastic, flexible material that can bend and stretch, unlike what is shown in the picture. As the wheel rolls, the legs will come into and then leave contact with the ground one after another. So let's say you start pushing sideways on the body of the wheel. The legs will try to remain upright because they're elastic. But because they are also flexible, when you push the wheel sideways, each leg will bend to the side. Because of that, while the feet will remain firmly planted on the ground, the body of the wheel will be offset to the side. Since the wheel is offset to the side, the next leg that comes into contact with the ground will be offset to the side from the previous leg. And this new leg will bend to the side just like the previous one, and so will the next one. As you can imagine, the wheel will keep sidestepping as long as there's a sideways force on it, even if the feet are firmly gripping the ground. Your rubber tire is basically like this wheel with millions and millions of legs on it. And this is what happens when the tire slips. Sliding, however, is just that. The rubber is being dragged across the ground like when you use an eraser. An extreme example is when you fully lock a tire when braking. That's a pure slide and you never want to slide a tire. Slip angle occurs when the car is turning, but when the wheels are going straight, slipping also improves grip. This is measured by slip ratio. When your wheels rotate, the tires cover a certain amount of distance. Depending on how fast they rotate, they cover that distance in a certain amount of time. And we all know distance over time is speed. So for example, if your tire's circumference is two meters and the wheel spins one revolution per second, this means every second the wheel will travel two meters or 7.2 kilometers per hour. This is known as your wheel speed, and it is one way to measure how fast your wheels are rotating. However, if you get wheel spin, your wheels will have higher speed than the car is traveling. That difference in speed is called slip ratio. It is the percent difference of the wheel speed with the ground speed. When the tire spins, the slip ratio is positive, and when the tires lock, the slip ratio is negative. Like slip angles, a tire will have a peak grip at a certain slip ratio before and after which it will start to lose gripping capabilities. I hope this video has helped you understand a bit more about how tires work and how you can make the most of them. Tires are often the most underappreciated component of a car and driving skill and vehicle setup for the most part are really just tools for you to use so you can keep the tires in its most optimal condition. So understanding tire slip is a key aspect of figuring out how to maximize your tires and then maximizing your grip. As always, if you want to learn more, ask me any question you want in the comments below, or you can message me directly on Discord with your question. I hope to get to chat with you, but in the meantime, keep sending it and I'll see you next time.